morning guys welcome back to another video here on Unplug TV well today we are doing a road trip video here in the test lander driving a little bit of highway and then in the city again and I want to test the autopilot again in the city because I'm not doing much city driving as you know you mainly see me driving these country roads highways and everything and the autopilot works kind of good on the under these conditions but today we are doing some city driving and see what the strengths and weaknesses are of the autopilot. All right, so let's put the car in autopilot. Well, even here on this construction site with no lane marking, oh, now it comes back. <laughs> the car was driving just fine in autopilot, no issues at all no problem recognizing this middle um, these little plastic thingies they put in the pavement that was all good yeah sometimes it does this we can drive actually 100 kilometers but um, it only automatically reduces the speed to 90 but you can override it again to 100 we are still in the highway and this one changes to 90 or even 80 sometimes and then the car slows down automatically but the allowed speed limit is still correctly recognized to 100 so I'm not sure what that is but this is since I got the car this is, has never changed um, not sure has anyone else experienced that oh and now here on the city road uh, 70 is allowed doing 73 just fine these two lanes clear lane marking of course autopilot has no problem at all no challenge for the car autopilot here and stop and go traffic I don't need to pay attention to traffic I still do but the car takes 80% 90 95 100% of your hassle away so we will arrive in three minutes at Suzy Auto Services in Springwood So we are now back on the motorway here after our appointment and you can see this weird line marking here from the construction sites and the car has no trouble to stay in line so far it follows follows the other cars in front of it and also the line marking which I cannot really see sometimes because it is scrapped out it is painted over there are lines coming from the other side like here and the car just does a fantastic job to stay in the right lane amazing So on these narrow city roads here, I cannot even activate autopilot. There's nothing there. Sometimes it flickers up for a second, but there's mainly nothing there. These main streets, yes, autopilot is working just fine in the city. But if you go a little bit further into the suburbs, there's no autopilot available at all. green slopes we are apparently see it doesn't see the red light over there there's a red light which is valid for me now the car does not see that yeah you will see it in a second you can see the light over there it did not see this in the camera here in the visual visualization visualization meters turn left onto Ridge Street wants to turn left here. Now turn left onto Ridge Street. Um, is there autopilot here? Yes it is. Okay, let's put the car in autopilot. 60 kilometers per hour is allowed. Should you drive 60 here? No, probably not. Car slows down a little bit. Far too fast in this corner here. Oh Jesus, and then it brakes. There's a red light. Okay, I have to turn off autopilot again. That was far too fast in this corner. Okay, no autopilot. Come on, give me autopilot. There it is again. Oh, is this sucker again here rattling? Slow down for Sam, I've got a green smiley face, so I'm driving 60. 
Phantom braking. Phantom braking again. Well, the sun comes directly towards us now, braking hard because of this car. It's not even touching our lane here, but it braked. curves here for example they are very hard to drive for autopilot let's see what it does now it would break and stay behind this car even it could overtake it here all right now it's jerking around going left right with the steering wheel comes to a roundabout me to go this way turn it back in autopilot here before this curve let's see if it slows down it goes no oh it went into the other lane oncoming traffic it went okay let's put it back in autopilot traffic lights Yeah, well, it's difficult. Okay. Back in autopilot. I keep my hands on the steering wheel all the time, so. Let's run this curve nicely. Good. All these potholes. Breaks a bit here. In 300 meters, enter the roundabout. Well, I think it goes slow because this car is going slow. Slower. Now enter the roundabout. It's no problem here, of course. Okay, roundabout. Back in autopilot. This time there's no car in front of us, but the sun is coming towards us in a bad angle. It breaks, it breaks, slows down. Can you still see? I've got both hands on the steering wheel. Phantom braking. In 300 meters, turn left onto Ipswich Road. Accelerating again. Take it out of autopilot now. Just want to go. Now turn left onto Ipswich Road. Do some more driving on other roads here in the city, just to test this more out. Yeah, well, this is the thing in Australia. They've got traffic lights behind the crossing as well, behind the intersection. While in Europe there are only traffic lights before the intersection, but they've got both. And sometimes it's very confusing, even for me to realize which traffic light is valid for me and which is actually my traffic light, you know? Okay. Let's put the car here back. Let it steer itself. Okay. There's no plinking nothing when two lanes merge into one. Oh, brakes for this car. Did you see that? Slow it down. So many traffic lights. Wow. Ah, oh, what? What? There you go. Okay, curve. Oh, 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 what is the car doing? Oh, God, Jesus. Now turn right onto Vendale Avenue. Yeah, come shut up. 
<laughs> it didn't take this curve well. <laughs> there were two lanes, two lanes, but it was far too fast to stay in the lane, so it was going to V into the other lane. Uh, this is killing me eventually. It's 50 kilometers, but it still shows 60. So I turn it down to 50 manually. Just to uh, drive to this road here and see what it does. But well, it should be fine. There are clear lane markings here, left and right. And also we've got traffic, so I can follow the car in front of us. You can see the dark gray car and then the ute, the utility car in front of it, and there are other cars. And this gray car is being used for navigation as well. See, it has a different color. It's a darker gray than all the other cars. This is the leading vehicle in front of us. So it um, follows this car as well. Car still an autopilot. You can see the traffic light there, but again, this is a traffic light with an arrow to the left. And it shows us only one. There's one person picking up. There's another person coming. Bicycle. Is it a bicycle? It is a bicycle. There we go. It's picking up speed. Slowing down here and curve. Didn't pick up this person there on the left. Okay, take it out. And let's go left here into a smaller road and see what it does there. So in this kind of road situation, oh yeah, here comes the no, no autopilot, it's confused. See there are so many line, lanes here, bus drop zone, drop off school, drop off, then there's school zone here. And now there's no autopilot because there's no lane marking. The car does not know what to do on these roads. We've got these little blue thingies in the middle of the road sometimes. They give you an indication um, during the night where you are. See there's a blue one there, just right there. There's no car behind me. Um, there's another one on the hump. There's still no autopilot here. So the car will not be able to drive on these roads. Yet. Um, I've got no freaking idea where we are, but it doesn't matter. I just want to test autopilot, you know. No lane marking, no autopilot. That's the rule. These blue reflectors in the road and obviously humans can drive here because you can see I clearly see a left and right lane here but the car cannot see this it sees a stop sign but no lane marking and no autopilot activation possible yeah on all these roads this does not work here no not even one flicker of autopilot so all these little roads here on the map, you're not able to drive them in autopilot, yet. Sometimes it sees lanes, like here now. Let's go this way. Very tiny urban road. Yeah, we've got these blue uh, reflectors in the ground but no clear lane marking as such. This is the stop line and the giveaway signage. Well, it doesn't see the sign, but this is the stop line. Okay, we're going right here. This is the wheelie bin. And well, we've got the roundabout here again. City Road. We don't want to go there. Ah, here's some line marking. Let's see if it pops back up. Yep, autopilot. What is it doing with this car? Yep, okay. Ah, uh, it turned off autopilot by itself. 
again a little bit too close to these parking cars for me let's see what it does this truck here or oh, far too close jeez jeez it would do it but it's jerky it's so close to these parking cars not funny there's heaps of space to the other side and this should be picked up by the software right the software should be able to see there's these cars are parking and this is the line this is the lane to the to the middle of the road so you've got space to go over there there's no incoming traffic can I activate here you can oh it drives on the other side of the road again Ooh. See the lane marking stopped and it drives on the other side of the road. Alright, just go left here. Ah, oh, come on. Temporarily unavailable. Okay, here we go again. Can I override? No, I cannot override it here. 60 kilometers. And this is totally fine now. See, it drives itself just fine. There's no problem. Clear lane marking again, left and right. Traffic, it can follow. No problem. But as soon as we go into these smaller roads, we try again here on the left. And there's no lane marking anymore even you can you could see from the when they did the um, the pavement the asphalt and everything you could see there's a there's a left and a right lane you could see it but the car is not able to um, see that actually it's okay put it car no no it doesn't there's no one behind us no autopilot no auto steer here we go back on it See, I would slow down in this condition here. I couldn't see the road where it goes to. You can't see if there's traffic or an obstacle behind the curve. Well, it did it, kind of. It slows down by itself. Oop, no, nah, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, slows down itself. Couldn't do the curve. It couldn't see far enough around the corner. And here, what is it doing here? Okay, it's finding its lane. So why is it driving so far on this road, on this side now? Such a wide road. Oh, it slows down itself. I'm not doing anything. Oh, we've been here before with this car. <laughs> Potentially, yes. Whoa! It recognized this parking car as a threat. Yes, this truck situation again. No, I take it off. Oh, that was close. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's just not good. And we can engage autopilot again. It would drive 50 kilometers an hour, which is far too fast for this road here. Far too fast. So what is it doing now? It is staying behind this car. <laughs> it's just parking there behind the car. It's not able to drive around this car to, um, well, continue driving in autopilot. Didn't want to do it. Okay, so we are back on kind of main road. So I should be able to engage autopilot here just fine. Yep, there's no problem here on these roads. This is all fine. 70, I'll take off. It's a red light. 
Okay guys, I'm going to drive back home now. Uh, so we have seen at the beginning autopilot on highways is obviously no problem and it gives you a great help and assistance to drive the car actually. It takes care of all the other cars, traffic, speed and drives just perfectly fine. On some roads in the city it drives as well, kind of good. So you can use it in city driving as well as long as you have clear lane markings on both sides or at least on one side and you've got traffic it can follow. But then on many, many other roads in the city, all these little roads, these urban roads where houses are and there's no lane marking left and right, it cannot drive at all. You cannot even engage autopilot at all. So there's no way to use autopilot on these roads yet. I'm not sure what they are going to do with the software if the software still recognizes there are two lanes, even there's no middle lane, middle line, lane and line. So how would you teach the software to do that? I don't know exactly, but they must have a plan for that. Obviously there are parking cars. As we have seen, this was always very jerky. Usually you keep far more distance to parking cars if possible, unless there's, there's traffic oncoming towards you and you have to, um, you have to drive slower and go closer to these other cars. But you're not driving 60 kilometers past these parking cars. It is so close sometimes. I had to take over several times now. It was so close, I closed my eyes almost. You shouldn't close your eyes while you're driving, right? It was just, this, this is not good. This is not good enough. If there's no oncoming traffic, you should go to the right, even a bit over the line if possible to give this parking car more space. You never know if they pop open a door or something, if someone goes out or in or people walking across, so you know, I'm always far too close for my taste, far too close. And then we just saw in the last example, it stops behind this parking car. It would have stopped there forever until the battery ran out of power. Or this car moved actually. <laughs> so we have to wait for the driver to come back and drive the car so our autopilot stuff works then again. It could not identify that this is a parking car because it was a bit in the curve and it just stopped. And I'm not sure while in other situations where we had curves and there was parking cars it just did it but it didn't do it in this case for some reason. Maybe it was because of the other car which came towards us which was waiting there for us to to actually um, move along so he could um, cross the lane. I don't know what the actual identifiers are for the software to make the decision to drive past a car or to stay behind a car. But interesting to experience that. So I would say I can probably drive 30, 40% in autopilot here in the city, but not more. Everything else is not working. It is jerky, it is too dangerous, too close to other cars. It is too fast. It is just not how I would drive or would, how a human driver would drive, you know? You slow down if you cannot see about, uh, over humps or around curves, you slow down and drive carefully and slowly around the curve and then you can see and then you keep driving. I do not see autopilot full self-driving in the city for many, 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 many years to come. Many years. I mean, we are talking about 10 years plus, at least 10 years plus. So I'm glad I invested the money in the company who does full self-driving and not in the product itself. Especially now while the stock price is so high. That's really good. I could have sold my Tesla shares and bought full self-driving. I was thinking about it. It would have paid for itself now with all the stock market, you know, spiking and everything. But I, there's, there's, there's nothing you can use it for actually. On a highway, yes, it overtakes other cars automatically and then goes back in the other lane. And it takes exits and goes into another highway if you, if this is in your route. But usually it is not a big deal to drive in just autopilot instead of full self-driving, you know. You have to take over manually sometimes, but it's not, in my eyes, it's not worth eight and a half grand or even 10 grand now after the price increase to the 1st of July. I think the decision was right to not spend the money on full self-driving yet. Maybe in the next car, in the next Tesla, in the Cybertruck, maybe I decide to get full self-driving then. But this could be another three, four, five years away until the car is actually here in Australia and you can order one. Who knows, you know? Who knows? And then we have to see how much is full self-driving? What can it do? Is it worth getting? 
Well, guys, let me know in the comments below what is your experience with full self-driving autopilot, if you have full self-driving. Do you use it often in the city? At the moment, I don't really think it's worth paying for it. All right, guys, this is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. You stay charged and we will see us again in the next video very soon. Thanks, guys. See you then. Bye bye.